Imagine a time long before the kings of Israel, when the fate of an entire nation depended on leaders chosen directly by God. Among them, an enigmatic and powerful figure emerges, Samson. From the very beginning, his story stood out. He was no ordinary man, but a special judge with a grand mission that few could fully comprehend. Samson was the last of the judges mentioned in the Book of Judges, a hero known for his unmatched strength and a life filled with mysteries and contradictions. His extraordinary strength, controversial choices, and the fact that he always seemed to walk the fine line between the sacred and the profane made him as fascinating as he was tragic. Throughout his life, Samson fought against the greatest enemies of the people of Israel at the time, the feared Philistines. But above all, his story raises deep questions. Where did his strength come from? What motivated him? And most importantly, why did he seem destined to walk such a difficult and challenging path? Even before his birth, Samson's destiny had already been set. His mother, a barren woman, lived in a time when Israel was under constant threat from the Philistines. One day, she received a visit that would forever change the course of history. An angel appeared before her, bringing a divine message. He announced that, against all odds, she would give birth to a special son, chosen by God, who would be a Nazirite from the womb. But what did it mean to be a Nazirite? A Nazirite was someone consecrated to God with a sacred vow of abstinence. There were clear rules. He could never drink wine, touch the dead, or cut his hair. And in Samson's case, his vow would be different, not temporary like other Nazi rites. His vow would last his entire life. Samson's mother received detailed instructions from the angel. She was to be careful about what she ate and drank, for the child she carried had a special mission. Upon hearing the revelation, she rushed to tell her husband, Manoah, who was also deeply moved by the heavenly visit. Concerned, Manoah prayed to God, asking for the angel to return once more to confirm the instructions. And so it happened. The angel returned, reaffirming Samson's calling and reassuring the family that this son was part of a divine plan. Samson would be born already bearing the weight of a mission on his shoulders. From his first breath of life, he would carry the purpose of saving Israel from the hands of the Philistines. A destiny marked by strength, but also by obedience to the vow that set him apart from all other men. As Samson grew, it became clear to everyone that he was no ordinary man. His superhuman strength and determination quickly set him apart among the people of Israel. And in a time when Israel had no kings, Samson became the leader the people so desperately needed, a judge. But not a judge as we understand today, rather a warrior, a liberator chosen by God to guide the nation and defend it from its enemies. Samson was the 13th and final judge mentioned in the book of Judges. He led Israel during a dark time when the people repeatedly fell into idolatry and strayed from God's ways. As a result, Israel's enemies, the Philistines, tormented the nation, stealing their lands, destroying their crops, and threatening their very existence. It was a time of chaos where strength and faith were the only weapons left to God's people. And in this setting, Samson stood out, not for political wisdom, but for his unmatched physical strength and his bravery in the face of the enemy. As a judge, Samson didn't rule from a throne. Instead, he led in battles and missions with the strength of dozens of men. Each time he faced the Philistines, his fame grew, as did the fear among his enemies. He became a legendary figure among the Israelites, a living hope that, with him in charge, the Philistines could be defeated. But while Samson was a hero to his people, he was also a man of desires and flaws. His leadership didn't follow the standards of purity and piety that other judges had. He lived on the edge, acting unpredictably, which made his story all the more intriguing. Samson was a strong leader, but his journey as a judge was just beginning, and the challenges he would face would test not only his physical strength, but also his commitment to the divine vow that guided him. Now imagine Samson, this man of incomparable strength, making a decision that would surprise everyone around him. He falls in love, not with a woman from his own people, but with a Philistine, an enemy of Israel. His parents, devout and God-fearing, are bewildered. How could the man chosen to free Israel from the Philistines choose a woman from among them? It seemed like a fatal mistake, but the Bible reveals that this decision was part of a greater plan. God was leading Samson down a mysterious path to provoke a confrontation with the Philistines. 
And it's during the journey to meet his future wife that one of the most iconic events in Samson's life occurs. While traveling through Philistine lands, he is suddenly attacked by a lion that appears out of nowhere, ready to strike. But Samson, with his superhuman strength, grabs the lion and tears it apart with his bare hands, as if it were a young goat. This episode shows a glimpse of the divine power that resided in him, but the story doesn't end there. Sometime later, Samson passes by the same place where he had killed the lion, and to his surprise, finds the carcass of the animal. Inside, bees had built a hive, and honey was flowing from the dead lion's body. This sight inspired Samson to pose a riddle to the guests at his wedding to the Philistine woman. Out of the strong came sweetness. The riddle seemed impossible to solve, as only Samson knew the secret of the lion and the honey. Desperate to find the answer, the Philistines turn to Samson's wife, pressuring her until she convinces him to reveal the mystery. When Samson discovers that his riddle has been betrayed, his anger is so great that he decides to settle the score with the Philistines in a brutal way. Instead of simply delivering the 30 garments promised to those who solved the riddle, Samson kills 30 Philistines, takes their clothes, and hands them over as payment. This episode was not just a personal act of revenge. It marked the beginning of Samson's personal war against the Philistines, and his strength, which seemed uncontrollable, was starting to manifest in dangerous ways. What began with love and marriage was now turning into violence and conflict. And Samson's journey as the most unpredictable and strongest judge of Israel was just beginning. The tension between Samson and the Philistines only escalated. After the betrayal involving the riddle and Samson's violent retaliation, the situation worsened even more. And here is where his first wife and the Philistine people made a fatal mistake. Outraged by Samson's actions, the Philistines decided to punish his wife and her parents in a cruel and ruthless way. They set fire to the house where they lived, killing them all. When Samson learned of the death of his wife and in-laws, his anger turned into an uncontrollable thirst for revenge. He had not only lost someone dear to him, but had been humiliated by those he considered enemies. It was time to show those who challenged him what he was truly capable of. And it was then that Samson, with an unthinkable strategy, carried out one of the most unusual acts of revenge in history. He captured 300 foxes. Now imagine the scene. Samson, with his strength and skill, ties the foxes in pairs, tail to tail, and fastens flaming torches between the animals' tails. He releases the foxes into the Philistines' fields, setting fire to all their grain crops, vineyards, and olive groves. In an instant, everything the Philistines had planted and harvested was reduced to ashes. Their fields were ablaze, and there was no way to contain the destruction. The fire ravaged everything in its path, leaving the Philistines stunned and powerless in the face of such retaliation. Once again, Samson proved that his strength was not only physical, but also strategic. He used his enemy's own resources against them, turning a personal vendetta into a devastating blow to the Philistines' economy and morale. This fiery revenge not only reaffirmed Samson's power, but also planted the seed of hatred in the hearts of the Philistines, who were now willing to do anything to defeat the man who seemed unbeatable. And so, the war between Samson and the Philistines continued, growing more intense with increasingly devastating consequences for both sides. Samson's revenge with the foxes was merely the prelude to even greater battles to come, and the shadow of his strength loomed over the Philistines like a constant threat. The tension between Samson and the Philistines had reached its peak. After the destruction of their fields with the foxes, the Philistines could no longer ignore the challenge. They were furious and determined to capture Samson once and for all. In a desperate attempt, they mobilized a large army and pressured the tribe of Judah, demanding that they hand Samson over. Now, imagine the dilemma of the people of Judah. They were terrified of the Philistines and feared that their wrath would fall upon the entire nation because of Samson's actions. So they did something that seemed unthinkable. They went to Samson, begging him to surrender to avoid a greater war. Without resistance and aware of God's plan, Samson agreed to be bound and handed over to the Philistines. Bound and unarmed, Samson was taken to the Philistine camp, where they were already celebrating their imminent victory. But the Philistines had no idea what was about to happen. 
As they prepared to capture him, something extraordinary occurred. The ropes binding Samson broke apart as if they were strands of wool, and his strength returned, manifesting with unimaginable fury. Without a sword, without a spear, without any traditional weapon, Samson looked around and found a simple yet lethal object in his hands, the jawbone of a donkey. Now picture this scene, a single man facing an army of thousands, armed only with the bones of an animal. What followed was a brutal display of strength and skill. With that jawbone, Samson attacked with devastating fury, striking down Philistine after Philistine. They were completely unprepared to face an adversary with such divine strength. In a fierce battle, Samson killed a thousand men. The ground was covered with defeated warriors, and the remaining army, in panic, fled in desperation. Samson's name echoed throughout the region, and his legend only grew. He was not just a leader of Israel, he was an invincible enemy to the Philistines. The battle with the donkey's jawbone became a milestone in Samson's life, a symbol of his unparalleled strength and of God's power working through him. He had proven once again that as long as he was in communion with God, no army could defeat him. But like all great strength, Samson would still have to face his greatest internal battles, the ones no external enemy could see. After the spectacular victory with the jawbone of a donkey, Samson continued to be a figure feared by the Philistines, but also a man driven by impulses. And one of those impulses led him to Gaza, one of the largest Philistine cities, where Samson became involved with a new woman, a prostitute. For the Philistines, this was the perfect opportunity to capture the hero who had terrorized them for so long. While Samson slept in the woman's house, the Philistines set a trap. They closed the massive city gates and planned an attack for the next morning, hoping to finally eliminate their greatest enemy. They were certain that, with the gates locked and soldiers waiting, Samson would have no way to escape. But once again, they underestimated the strength and cunning of the man chosen by God. In the middle of the night, Samson awoke, perhaps sensing danger. And what he did next was something no one could have predicted. Instead of trying to sneak away quietly or fight the guards, he decided to confront the obstacle head on. With a strength that defied all logic, Samson made his way to the massive city gates. And with his bare hands, he tore the entire gates from their place not just the doors, but also the posts and locks that held them. Imagine the scene. The man the Philistines tried to imprison, now carrying on his shoulders the very gates that were meant to trap him. And he didn't just tear them out, he carried them a long distance, all the way to the top of a hill. It was a gesture of defiance, a demonstration of his strength, not only physical, but also symbolic. Gaza, a fortified city, was now vulnerable, exposed. Samson had shown the Philistines that no wall, no gate could hold him. This episode further magnified his legend. There was no city that could imprison him and no enemy capable of stopping him. But with all this power, Samson was also becoming increasingly reckless with the consequences of his actions. He was living a life driven by impulses and risky decisions, and little did he know that the greatest of all these risks was yet to come. The humiliated Philistines knew that capturing him would not be a matter of strength, but of cunning. And for that, they needed to find a weakness. And that weakness was approaching in the form of a woman named Delilah. Now we come to the most well-known and perhaps most tragic chapter of Samson's life. After all his battles, victories, and grand feats, Samson met the one who would mark the beginning of his downfall, Delilah. She was not just any woman, but someone who captivated Samson's heart in a way no one else had before. He was in love, and this love would blind him far more deeply than any attack from the Philistines ever could. Delilah, a Philistine woman, quickly became the target of a cunning plan by the leaders of her people. They knew that Samson's strength was supernatural and that the only way to defeat him was by discovering his secret. They offered Delilah a huge sum of silver to extract the truth about the source of his power. And so, Delilah began her dangerous game. She persistently asked Samson where his strength came from. Each time, he made up a different story. If they tie me with new ropes, I will lose my strength, he said once. If they bind me with special cords, I will no longer be strong, he said another time. And each time Delilah tried, the Philistines were lurking, ready to capture him. But Samson easily freed himself from the bindings, mocking them. 
But Delilah didn't give up. She pressed him more and more, making Samson feel guilty, insisting that if he truly loved her, he would tell her the truth. With each question, Samson got closer to revealing the real answer until finally, worn out by her persistence, he confessed, my strength is in my hair. I have been a Nazirite from my mother's womb. If my hair is cut, I will lose my strength. Delilah knew she had finally uncovered the secret the Philistines had been seeking. And that night, as Samson slept in her lap, she called the Philistines. Silently, they cut the seven braids of Samson's hair. In that moment, something extraordinary happened. The strength he had always known, the strength that made him invincible, left his body. When the Philistines rushed in, Samson tried to defend himself as he always did. But this time, he was weak, vulnerable. They captured him easily, and to ensure he would never again be a threat, they blinded him, gouging out his eyes. Samson, the strongest man Israel had ever known, was now in the hands of his enemies. His strength did not come only from his hair, but from the covenant with God that he had broken by revealing his secret. And so, the man who once tore the gates off a city and killed a thousand men with a donkey's jawbone was now a prisoner, blind, humiliated, and without his strength. Delilah had betrayed Samson, and the Philistines finally believed they had won. But Samson's story was not over yet. He was about to rise one last time. Now Samson, the once invincible hero, was reduced to a broken man. Delilah's betrayal had not only taken away his strength, but also his sight, a symbol of the darkness that now dominated his life. The Philistines, proud of their victory, took him captive, and to ensure he would never rise against them again, cruelly blinded him, gouging out his eyes. The warrior, who once clearly saw his enemies, now lived in complete darkness, both physical and spiritual. Samson was taken as a slave to perform the most humiliating and brutal task, grinding grain at a mill, a job reserved for animals. He, who had once crushed armies, was now crushing grain, bound to a wheel that turned without end. It was a sad and melancholic image. The Philistines believed they had triumphed over Israel's greatest enemy, and to them, Samson was no longer a threat. But Samson's true strength had never been just in his muscles or his hair. Samson's strength came from his faith and his connection with God. And even as he worked in that darkness, blind and hopeless, something began to change. His hair, a symbol of his covenant with God, began to grow again. With each strand that grew, Samson remembered the God who had once given him the power to free Israel. The Philistines, blinded by their own arrogance, did not realize what was happening. They thought Samson was defeated forever, incapable of causing any more damage. But as time passed and his hair grew, Samson also began to reflect. He realized that even in his downfall, God was still present, listening to his silent prayers and watching every move. Now, with his enemies all around him and his life in ruins, Samson began to plan one final act. He knew he couldn't undo what had happened, but he also knew he could still be the instrument of divine justice, even in his weakened state. All he needed was one last chance, one final plea to God to redeem the purpose of his life. Samson was about to show that, although his physical eyes were lost, his spiritual vision was clearer than ever. The strength he carried in his heart, the strength that came from his faith, was still there, waiting for the right moment to explode in one final act of heroism. Now we come to the final moment of Samson's story. The Philistines, in their euphoria of victory, organized a great feast in honor of their god Dagon. They wanted to celebrate the capture of the man who had tormented them so much, displaying Samson as a trophy. Thousands of Philistines gathered in the great temple, laughing, drinking, and mocking Samson, believing he was finished forever. In the center of this celebration, Samson, blind and humiliated, was brought into the main hall. Bound and led by a young boy, he heard the laughter and insults coming from all directions. But while the Philistines celebrated, Samson remained silent, focused on one thought. He still had one last chance to fulfill his purpose. He asked the young boy to guide him to the central pillars of the temple, the ones that supported the entire structure. With trembling hands, Samson felt the stone columns, knowing that this would be the stage for his final act. And then, amidst the noise and darkness surrounding him, he made his final prayer. In a weak but determined voice, Samson prayed to God, O sovereign Lord, remember me, strengthen me just once more, 
just one more time and allow me to avenge the loss of my eyes. It was a prayer of redemption, a plea for God to use him once again as his instrument. And at that moment, Samson's strength returned. It was not just the physical strength he had always possessed, but a spiritual strength, a power that came from his deep connection with the Creator. With a war cry, Samson pushed the pillars with all his might. The temple began to shake. The columns cracked, and within seconds, the massive structure collapsed. The sound was deafening. The walls fell, the stones shattered, and thousands of Philistines were buried in the rubble, including the leaders who had oppressed Israel for so long. Samson, in the final act of his life, sacrificed himself, bringing destruction to his enemies and an unexpected victory for his people. Thus, in his death, Samson killed more Philistines than in his entire life. He, who had been betrayed, humiliated, and blinded, ended his journey as a tragic hero, someone who found redemption in the last moment. His body was recovered by his family, who buried him beside his father, Manoah. The people of Israel knew that, despite his flaws, Samson had fulfilled his role in the divine plan. His story reminds us that even in the darkest of circumstances, there is always a chance for redemption, and that true power lies not only in physical strength, but in the faith and purpose that guide us.